tonight. Pushing on, India's Modi continues to point out the flaws in the opposition's plans for the future, starting with the inheritance law. Delicate diplomacy. The stakes are high as top diplomat Anthony Blinken visits China for talks that could define the future of Sino-US relations. Vetoed plans. Russia shut down the US newly proposed space arms race prevention plan, raising suspicions across the board. And puppy mischief. There's a ring missing and an adorable robber on the loose. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Derna, World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Warnasuriya. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Let's get you up to date with the happenings from across the globe now, starting off with updates on India elections. Well, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched a scathing attack on the opposition National Congress Party, accusing it of planning to snatch people's property following suggestions of a new US-style inheritance law. The Prime Minister's comments came after Sam Pitroda, chief of the Congress Overseas Faction, suggested that India could look at a 50% inheritance tax similar to the one enacted by the US. Notably, Pitroda made his observations amid a heated debate between the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, led by Modi, and the Congress over wealth redistribution in the country. In its election manifesto, the Congress claimed that the people of India are divided into economic terms due to the BJP's policies. Instead, it pledged to build a fair, just and equal opportunity economy and bring prosperity to all sections of the people. The BJP, however, alleged that the Congress manifesto effectively means seizing and redistributing the wealth of Indians. Congress has denied those claims. And on some delicate diplomacy moves tonight, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Shanghai where he met with business leaders and students and he reaffirmed the United States' commitment to a stable relationship with China. His next leg of talks continues in Beijing shortly. China has warned the U.S. that Washington and Beijing must choose between confrontation or cooperation as Secretary of State Antony Blinken began an official visit during which he is expected to deliver an ultimatum over the war in Ukraine. Blinken met the powerful Shanghai Communist Party boss Chen Jinning ahead of talks with China's central leadership, including Foreign Minister Wang Yi, in Beijing over the next two days. Tensions are running high over U.S. accusations that China is supporting Russia's military-industrial machine in Ukraine. Blinken is expected to warn that the U.S. will take punitive steps unless China stops sending dual-use weapons-related technology to Russia. Well, still on the U.S. updates, President Joe Biden signed a hard-fought bill into law that provides billions of people dollars with new U.S. aid to Ukraine, notching a rare bipartisan victory as he seeks re-election and ending months of wrangling with Republicans in Congress. It's a good day for America, it's a good day for Europe, and it's a good day for world peace, for real. U.S. President Joe Biden signed a nearly $100 billion foreign aid package into law Wednesday after months of wrangling with Republicans in Congress. $61 billion of that will go to help Ukraine in the fight against Russia's more than two-year invasion. America stands with our friends. We stand up against dictators. We bow to no one, to no one, certainly not Vladimir Putin. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said he was grateful to Biden and Congress. Biden said he had already approved an initial $1 billion in weapons supplies for Ukraine and that the flow of these arms would start Wednesday. I'm making sure the shipments start right away. In the next few hours, literally the few hours, we're, we're going to begin sending in equipment to uh, Ukraine for air defense munitions, for artillery, for rocket systems and armored vehicles. The Democrat had pressed Republican lawmakers for six months to approve more funding for Ukraine. His 2024 election rival Donald Trump objected to aid for Ukraine, and some Republicans in Congress refused to back it, questioning whether Ukraine could ever prevail. But with the backing of Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, his chamber passed the bill Saturday, and the Senate approved it late Tuesday. 
The legislation also includes $26 billion for Israel, as well as $1 billion in humanitarian assistance to Gaza. And Israel must make sure all this aid reaches the Palestinians in Gaza without delay. And everything we do is guided by the ultimate goal of bringing these hostages home, securing a ceasefire, and setting the conditions for an enduring peace. Another $8 billion will go to countering China's military might, with funding for Taiwan and other U.S. partners in the Indo-Pacific. Biden also signed a separate bill tied to the aid package that bans TikTok in the United States if its owner, Chinese tech firm ByteDance, fails to divest the popular short video app over the next nine months to a year. TikTok CEO said on Wednesday that the company expects to win a legal challenge to block the legislation. Meanwhile, there's a tension at the UN. Russia vetoed a U.S. draft of United Nations Security Council resolution that called on countries to prevent an arms race in outer space, a move that prompted the United States to question if Moscow was hiding something. So for more on this situation, we have other than the world news special correspondent Minoli Sagaria from Kursk in Russia. Minoli, what's the situation? Yes, Vinod. The vote came after Washington accused Moscow of developing an anti-satellite nuclear weapon to put in space, an allegation that Russia has denied. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Moscow was against putting nuclear weapons in space. Russia's UN ambassador accused Washington of trying to tarnish Moscow and said Russia would shortly begin negotiations with council members on its own draft resolution aimed at keeping space peaceful. The draft resolution was put to a vote by the US and Japan after nearly six weeks of negotiations. It received 13 votes in favor while China abstained and Russia cast a veto. The UN text would have affirmed an obligation to comply with the Outer Space Treaty and called on states to contribute actively to the objective of the peaceful use of outer space and of the prevention of the arms race in outer space. Back to you, Vinod. Thank you. And that was other than the news special correspondent Minoli Sagaria from Kursk in Russia. A Russian court ordered one of the defense minister Sergei Shoigu's deputies to be kept in custody on suspicion of being taken bribes, the highest profile corruption case since President Vladimir Putin sent troops into Ukraine in 2022. In a glass cage in a Moscow court stands Russia's deputy defense minister Timur Ivanov on Wednesday, a day after he was arrested at work for accepting large bribes. The court remanded him in custody for two months and said Ivanov entered into a criminal conspiracy with third parties to receive property and services while working for the Ministry of Defence. Ivanov, Deputy Minister since 2016, was in charge of property management, housing, construction and mortgages. The Defence Ministry, whose spending has spiralled since the start of the war, has made no comment. As the right-hand man of Defence Minister Sergei Shaigu, Ivanov's detention is the highest profile corruption case since Russia sent troops into Ukraine in February 2022. The Kremlin said President Vladimir Putin had been informed and Shaigu had also been told. Ivanov was present earlier on Tuesday at a meeting of top defence officials chaired by Shaigu. It's triggered speculation about a battle within the elite to crack down on corruption that has plagued Russia's post-Soviet armed forces. Russia's Kommersant newspaper said Ivanov was arrested by the Federal Security Service, the successor to the KGB, which Putin last month told to root out corruption in state defence procurement. Ivanov has been the subject of journalistic investigations, which allege he and his family live a lavish luxury lifestyle. Russian military bloggers have accused top generals of corruption and incompetence after the army's hurried withdrawal from parts of Ukraine due to seriously overextending itself during the first days of the invasion. Ivanov faces 15 years in jail if convicted. Well, we are going in for a short commercial break now. We'll be right back with more key global updates. Stay tuned. Welcome back. A new video of an Israeli-American hostage has been released by Hamas. 
the hostage who is missing his left hand, addressed the Israeli government and criticized its failure to secure a deal for the release of the remaining hostages. Hamas has released a new video showing an Israeli-American hostage. The person in captivity identified himself as 23-year-old Hirsch Goldberg Poland. He was kidnapped from the Nova Music Festival during Hamas's attack on October 7th. In the video, the hostage says that he has been in captivity for 200 days, suggesting that the video was filmed on the 200th day of the war this week. However, the exact date of filming is yet to be verified. In the video, the hostage criticizes Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the government for failing to save the remaining hostages, as other Israeli hostages have done in Hamas hostage videos. He also says that Israel's airstrikes killed 70 captives in the Gaza Strip. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on Wednesday called for the immediate release of the hostage. All I can say is, this is a an innocent young man being held hostage by a terrorist organization and he should be released immediately without condition and without delay. Poland is among the 133 hostages still held in Gaza after more than 100 were released last year. Israel has been launching assaults on Gaza in an attempt to rescue them. More than 34,000 Palestinians have been killed since the start of the conflict, according to Gaza's health ministry. The United Nations is particularly concerned about the number of children killed. The UN Commissioner for Human Rights says a child is being killed or wounded every 10 minutes. Meanwhile, on the Red Sea tensions, Yemen's Iran-aligned Houthi Arm Group says it attacked U.S. and Israel vessels with a Western coalition of warships defending amid the continuing fallout from the war on Gaza. The Iran-aligned group said it targeted the U.S. ship Myersk Yorktown, an American destroyer in the Gulf of Aden, and Israeli ship MSC Veracruz in the Indian Ocean. Yemen's Houthis have been attacking ships in the Red Sea region since November in what they say is a campaign of solidarity with Palestinians fighting Israel in Gaza. Separately, British maritime security firm Ambre said that it was aware of an incident southwest of the port city of Aden, an area where the Houthis often target ships they say are linked to Israel or the United States. The vessel reported an explosion in the water approximately 72 nautical miles east of Djibouti, according to an updated advisory from Ambre. And back now in the US, some legal updates. Rudy Giuliani, a former lawyer for Donald Trump, is among 18 people charged in Arizona with illegally seeking to claim the state's 2020 electoral votes for the then U.S. president in an indictment unsealed that names Trump as an unindicted conspirator. Former lawyer to Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, is among 18 people charged by a grand jury with allegedly taking part in an Arizona scheme to install fake electors to re-elect then-U.S. President Trump in 2020. The indictment, unsealed on Wednesday, stems from efforts to reverse Democrat Joe Biden's victory in several states that year, based on Trump's false claims that he had been re-elected. Giuliani's spokesman confirmed the former New York mayor was among seven defendants whose names were initially redacted in the indictment. Another is identified as chief of staff in 2020, who was Mark Meadows. Arizona's attorney general said the redacted names would be made public after serving the indictments to all defendants. The court document lists Trump as an unindicted co-conspirator under the description of a former president of the United States who spread false claims of election fraud following the 2020 election. The 11 defendants whose names were immediately made public in the indictment correspond to those who allegedly served as fake electors for Trump in Arizona. They're charged with nine counts of crimes, including conspiracy, fraudulent schemes and forgery. Electors are people chosen to formally cast a state's electoral votes in the U.S. Electoral College system used in presidential elections. Arizona was one of seven states where Trump allies sought to award their electoral votes to Trump, even though those states were won by Biden. And on the road to the White House tonight, U.S. allies are taking steps to defend or advance their interest in the event former President Donald Trump returns to power in November elections and even chance based on recent opinion polls in swing states. 2024 is our final battle. Former U.S. President Donald Trump could return to power in November elections. Everywhere, U.S. allies are preparing for such an event. 
from Japan lining up its Trump whisperer to Germany waging a charm offensive inside the Republican Party, nations are taking steps to defend or advance their interests. America's closest ally in Asia worries Trump may revive trade protectionism and demand more money for the upkeep of U.S. forces in Japan. That's according to government officials. The country is preparing to deploy Sunao Takao to bolster its diplomatic engagement with the Trump camp. In the past, the Harvard-educated interpreter helped former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe bond with Trump over games of golf. <laughs> Japan's former Prime Minister Taro Aso also recently met with Trump in New York. In Mexico, government officials have been meeting people close to Trump to discuss issues including migration and the trafficking of fentanyl into the U.S. Mexico could face more U.S. pressure on these issues under Trump. The former president has said he would order the Pentagon to attack cartel leadership and infrastructure. Sources say Mexico's ruling party is considering alternative candidates to appoint as the next foreign minister, depending on whether Trump wins or not. Germany has been building bridges with Trump's Republican base at a state level. Mindful that Trump threatened harsh tariffs on Germany's car industry back when he was president, Berlin is using a transatlantic coordinator to ready for Trump 2.0. And behind the scenes, Australia is trying to make a key defense deal from being unwound by Trump. Australia's U.S. Ambassador Kevin Rudd is pushing Canberra to act fast on enacting defense legislation hoping it would make the sale harder for Trump to unpick. Well, let's go in for a short commercial break. More well news on the other side. Welcome back. Well, if you're a pet owner and something goes missing around the house, the last suspect that would come up in one's mind is not our fluffy friends. Well, this is a story that serves as a good lesson that often the preparators are the ones closest to us. Marsha Baker freaked out when she realized her 30th anniversary <laughs> wedding ring was missing from the dresser. I'm like crying because I can't find the ring and I kind of knew who did it. Yep. All signs pointed to Ember, the rambunctious two-year-old golden doodle. Marsha thought Ember had dropped the ring in the grass. She started combing the lawn. Her daughter, Michaela, had a better idea. So I'm like, let me grab this metal detector before it gets too dark, and then we'll head to the house. Ring camera video shows Michaela and her husband coming to the rescue with metal detectors. But first, they wanted to see if maybe, just maybe, Ember had swallowed it. So I'm checking for the chip. There's That's a her chip. chip. There's a ring. <laughs> yep, it was Amber after all. So off they went to the vet. There it was. An x-ray showed the ring in Amber's tummy. The vet performed a gastrointestinal endoscopy. I get a phone call and he said, um, we got the ring out. Um, Amber's fine. Um, the ring's fine. <laughs> the ring is now back on Marsha's hand, and time will tell if Ember's days of mischief are over. <laughs> well, that is all the stories we have to report to you tonight on World News. Well, join us again tomorrow for more key global updates. Until then, thank you and have a good night.